Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Wonderful to, uh, to see you all this uh, first Sunday after Christmas today. We will go ahead and begin with our opening hymn on page 360 in your hymnal, All My Heart Again Rejoice. <laughs> Divine service setting four, page 203 in your hymnal, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept the record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Well, 
Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We read the words of the intro responsibly as printed in your bulletin. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. and Redeemer, you wonderfully created us, and in the incarnation of your Son, yet more wondrously restored our human nature. Grant that we may ever be alive in him who made himself to be like us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
The Old Testament reading for this, the first Sunday after Christmas, is taken from Isaiah chapter 61 and 62. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Read the gradual responsibly. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. The epistle is taken from Galatians chapter 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. Because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So no, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise. <laughs> According to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him, according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servants depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting 
and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom. And the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. We confess now our commonly held Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten of not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made a man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, who seem to have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father of God, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who is spoken by the prophets. And I believe in the Holy Christian and Apostolic Church. I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead. In the light of the world Amen. seated, I invite the children of the congregation to come forward for the children's message of this morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. Good. Is Jesus smarter than this? What's that? Is, is Jesus smarter than this? He smarter than this? He was, Jesus was as small as that guy at one point. Yes, he was. He's called a crazy creature. He's crazy. Okay. Well, let me ask you this this morning. Have you guys ever made a promise before? Yeah. Yeah. And when you promise something... When you generate, do you, when you say, so let's say, what, what's, what's a promise that you've made before? Um, I made a promise, my mom made a promise to get wrongs. Okay. <laughs> to get wrongs? Is that what it was? That's Good. That's uh, that's have you guys ever? That's that's oh, that's a good one too, actually. Um, <laughs> the, uh, have you guys ever made a promise maybe to said, mom and dad, I promise I'll clean my room? Maybe. <laughs> or, I promise to take my plates to the sink after I'm done eating. Maybe something like that. Or something, maybe something like that. But you promise it, and then you do it later, right? Well, there's a man in our text today, our text, whose name was Simeon. And Simeon was an old guy. He was really old. Um, do you guys know anybody who's really old? Who's, who do you know who's really old? My great-grandma. Your great-grandma, good. My great-grandpa. Yeah, your great-grandpa. Um, uh, your two grandmas, that's, that's right. Uh, so yeah, there, there are people we know who are very old, right? And one of the things... And Papa, and Papa Gary. That's right, Papa Gary, okay. So... There, Simeon in our text today, he was really old, and God promised him that he would get to see the Savior of the world with his own eyes. And so he's sitting there, and Simeon is in the temple one day, and he's praising God, probably singing, probably saying prayers. And then Mary and Joseph come in to the temple, like a church, and they're holding baby Jesus in his arms, in their arms. 
And you know what Simeon does? He runs over and he picks up baby Jesus right out of Mary's arms. And he says, Lord, you fulfilled your promise. I can now depart in part in peace. I've seen the Lord's salvation. Does God keep all of his promises to us? Yeah, he does. He kept his promise to Simeon uh, to let him see the Lord's Christ. He kept his promise to send the Savior of the world. And God keeps all of his promises to us, too. Does God promise to love you? Yeah, and will God always keep that promise? Yeah, he will. Does God promise to give you eternal life with him forever? Yeah, and God will keep that promise. And that's one of the things that we can think about when we hear this text about Simeon today, that God always keeps the promises that he makes to us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for keeping your promises. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. mercy and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Merry Christmas to you still and a happy holidays to you as well. One of the great things about being Lutheran, liturgical Lutherans especially, is that we get to save both. Not only do we get to keep saying Merry Christmas, 
to everyone while we celebrate the real 12 days of Christmas, which run all the way until Epiphany. But we also get to say happy holidays because the church celebrates a number of holy days all the way from December 19th to January 6th on Epiphany. And it's a few of those holy days that come right after Christmas that I want to draw your attention to this morning because they teach us something very important, especially in conjunction with our gospel reading for today. Those feast days that follow right after Christmas, and there are three of them, are the Feast of St. Stephen on December 26th, the Feast of St. John the Apostle and Gospel Writer on December 27th, that's today, and then also the Feast of the Holy Innocents on December 28th. And what these saints teach us, what these holy days teach us, like, like we heard today in our Gospel reading, is that they teach us to depart this life in peace, with peace in our hearts. One of the pains that we all have to experience, unless Jesus comes again before it happens, and come Lord Jesus for sure we pray, one of the things that we all have to experience is death. The wages of sin is the death of our bodies. And that's a scary prospect. And I think sometimes we get this idea in our minds that unless we die peacefully in our sleep, then we're not departing in peace. That if we were to endure long struggle with Alzheimer's, or with cancer, or if we drive, die tragically in an accident or by, by violence, then that it's impossible to depart in peace. Well, God is here today to tell you that no matter how it comes, you can depart this life in peace. Peace in your heart and peace in your mind. Let's start today with our point of reading for the first Sunday after Christmas. Today we heard of Simeon. And Simeon was in old age. He was getting close to the end of life, as, uh, as it often happens. And the Holy Spirit had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Christ. Quite the awesome promise that was given to Simeon. Well, 40 days after Jesus is born in Bethlehem, Mary and Joseph take Jesus up to the temple. Two reasons for that. Mary had to wait 40 days before she could take up the offerings for purification for herself. And then also Jesus had to be dedicated to the Lord, or sacrifices offered on his behalf so that he wouldn't have to serve the Lord in his temple day and night, as the Mosaic law required. And so they go into the temple, and as soon as they go in, immediately Simeon sees Jesus. And I don't know how, but he knows immediately who it is. And he takes Jesus up in his arms, and he says those words that we're all familiar with because we sing them every single week. Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of of your people, Israel. Simeon says now that since he's seen the Savior, he can depart in peace. He can die now with peace in his heart and in his mind because he's seen, he's seen the Lord. And Jesus is the peace that we have no matter how death may come. Knowing Jesus, having him as our Redeemer, and as our God who loves us and cherishes us means that we can depart in peace no matter how it happens. And these holy days that come right after Christmas help us to see that. On December 26th, the church celebrates St. Stephen. You guys probably remember from the book of Acts who Stephen is. In fact, this feast day has been celebrated so long by the church on December 26th that it's even immortalized in a Christmas carol that you guys are well familiar with. Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of 
right? <laughs> That's where it comes up. So the church has been celebrating this feast here for a long time, right after Christmas. And of course, King Wenceslas does all his Christmas things of caring for the poor and all that on the Feast of Stephen as well. Why? Because Stephen was a deacon in the church, as we heard in the book of Acts, and his job was to go out and help the poor, right? There's that connection there with King Wenceslas. Anyway, so St. Stephen's Day is on December 26th, and according to the book of Acts, you know what happens there. He went out proclaiming the word of God, <coughs> calling those Jewish leaders to repentance and to faith in Jesus Christ. And in return, they laid hands on him, drug him outside the city walls of Jerusalem, and began stoning him to death. And yet, even though he died in this tragic way, he still departed in peace. Now, how is that possible? Well, before, before they laid hands on him and drug him out of the city, Stephen looked up and he saw the heavens part before him, and he saw the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of God, much like Simeon did. And as they were stoning him, Stephen cries out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Throughout it all, he was looking to Jesus his Savior, and his Redeemer. He, like Simeon, had seen his salvation, and so he could depart his life in peace, even though his end was anything but peaceful. The next day, December 27th, is the Feast of St. John the Apostle and Gospel writer. John is quite the opposite of Stephen. John, he ended up living a very long life, and he was the only one of the apostles who yeah. did so. Yeah. All the other apostles, they were martyred, and yet John lived out his life. He died at a ripe old age. And John, too, I mean, he was certainly one that um, didn't escape the persecution, although he didn't die from it. He had seen and experienced just as much sorrow throughout his life as he did joy, and he was able to depart his life in peace. And why? For the same reason as Simeon, the same reason as Stephen. Because he saw his Savior, Jesus Christ, and he knew him well. Then comes December 28th, a very tragic day in all the church's feasts. It's the Feast of the Holy Innocents. And that day marks the death of all the babies in Bethlehem who were slaughtered at the hands of King Herod as the, he sought to kill Jesus. It is a horrific event, but the church honors those who perished with a feast day that comes just three days after Christmas. And yet, even they departed this life in peace because our Savior and the Redeemer of the world held these babes in his arms and brought them safely to the side of God in heaven. And so we see from Simeon, from Stephen, from John, and the Holy Innocents, that no matter how we depart this life, whether after a long-lived life or much too young, peacefully or tragically, we may depart this life in peace. Because we know Jesus as our Redeemer and our Savior. And this ultimately is one of the big things that Christmas is all about. God became man to save us from sin and death. Jesus was born to rescue us from that curse of sin that causes us to die. Our Lord came as a baby in the flesh so that by his bodily death on the cross and his bodily resurrection from the grave, we could have the resurrection of our own bodies and a promise of a resurrected life in body and soul with God forever. And the result of that, of Jesus taking on human flesh and accomplishing that for us, the result is that we get to have peace 
true, unshakable peace, no matter how or when we depart this life. Well, the day is likely to come when the wages of sin will mean death for you. Moses declares in Psalm 90, You, O God, return man to the dust, and say, Return, O children of man. The years of our life are seventy, or even by reason of strength, eighty. But God has rescued us through this little baby that was born in a manger. His flesh means the resurrection of yours. His new little life, lying there in the manger, means new and everlasting life for you. And so depart in peace, all of you, dear Christians, not only from church today, but whenever that day comes, when Christ calls you to himself. For though your eyes may not have seen the Savior in the same way that Simeon's did, you know him, and you love him for the great salvation he gives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Eternal Lord God, in the fullness of time, you sent forth your Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem us and give us the adoption of your sons and heirs. Hear us, Father, as we call to you in his name. Give us grace to rejoice in Christ's blessed incarnation and grant us a glad new year. Lord, in your mercy, here. Heavenly Father, from whom all fatherhood on earth is named, bless the families of all Christians with your promise. Give parents diligence and delight in their work, and grant your favor on all children that they may grow in strength and wisdom. Bless all widows, orphans, and broken families also with your mercy, and give them joy in the redemption you have won for us in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Here. O worthy judge, from you proceeds the spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might, knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Give wisdom to those who make, administer, and judge our laws, that they may serve faithfully in their tasks according to your good pleasure for the benefit of our people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious Lord, receive our prayers for those who suffer from loneliness. Comfort them with a sure and certain knowledge that they will never be forsaken by you. Give them family and friends within the household of faith with whom they can find loving companionship. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Blessed Lord, help the sick and suffering, especially those who desire our prayers, including Dave and Bernice, Ron and Joy, Regina, Gunnar, Gary, and also Todd. Surround them with your love in Christ, and according to your gracious will, Heal them. Comfort all those who mourn and fill their hearts with a certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Father of lasting peace, show your mercy to those who receive the Lord's Supper this day, that they would behold their salvation in the very body and blood of Christ given for them, and with St. Simeon be well prepared to depart in peace according to your word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament, page 208. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, 
for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In the beginning, you created all things by your word, and in the fullness of time, your word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Let your word made flesh dwell richly among us, that faithfully eating his body and drinking his blood, we may receive the fullness of your grace and truth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
bless you and keep you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ Rise. Now may this true body, true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in body and soul into life everlasting. All your sins have been forgiven by Christ the crucified. Depart in his peace. Amen. Amen.
O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Christmas uh, once again to you all. Uh, just remember, we Christians, we get to keep celebrating Christmas all the way through Epiphany. And if you, uh, if you really want to play with the liturgical language, you can even go all the way until Mary's purification 40 days after, uh, after Christmas. So if you want to keep your Christmas tree up that long, or if you just forget, I guess that works. You can just fall back on that too. And so on. Um, <laughs> A um, couple of announcements here. Um, so I will be gone this week. I'll be, we're leaving after church this morning to go down to Texas um, until Thursday. So we're going to go down and visit Angela's folks for a little bit here. Um, but if you do need me, if there's an emergency, I will gladly come back. It's only about a four-hour drive, so it's pretty quick to drive up 75 to, to get back up there. So if anything major does happen, make sure you call me, and I'll come back for that. Um, and uh, also, as well, thank you all for the uh, the Christmas gift from the church. I greatly appreciate it. it was very uh, very.
very, very kind and generous of, uh, of you all. So thank you so much for that as well. Uh, any announcements from you all? Have a nice trip. <laughs> thank you very much, Linda. <laughs> all right. Well, as always, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you. Thanks be to God. Thank you.